This is Susan Bassey, and I want to take you on a very special First Amendment investigative audit. And I want to show you what happens when we do what is called open sourcing and collaborative journalism. When we combine the First Amendment auditors with mainstream media and citizen journalists to do local reporting. Local reporting that makes a difference, that exposes police misconduct, bad prosecutors, and good and bad judges. And when we have transparency and accountability in all of our local communities, that's when the First Amendment is protected and all of us will know that we worked to change things for the better. I need some direction. Uh, Miss Bassey is here and Miss Bassey is being Miss Bassey and I caught her on camera turning on her camera slash video function on her iPad. There was, I made a good decision um, and the judge, thanks to the judge, the judge is the best. She knew what was right from wrong. Every single word that the judge spoke uh, was uh, incredible. Uh, it, rarely am I speechless, but uh, I'm impacted by what she said. Uh, she was uh, articulate. And, and I've never seen a judge before speak the words like Judge Dan did. Now, this prosecution absolutely should have never been brought. As a matter of fact, the police officers themselves should have been charged with the crimes. And they weren't charged with the crimes. Yeah, APD, Allentown Police Department, and its management, they just don't get it. Um, this was a case that should have never have been brought. Police officers should have been disciplined for what they did to my client. They beat him. They attacked him for, for no basis. And then uh, they did no investigation. Uh, they let this go to the jury, just hoping the jury was going to close their eyes and say it's cops versus a young Latino man, and therefore he's guilty, and he risked going to jail based on lies, based on deception. And the district attorney's office is complicit in that for bringing these charges. On Friday, one of my colleagues pointed out an article from Allentown, Pennsylvania, where a judge actually blasted police officers and a district attorney for engaging misconduct and bringing a criminal case that should have been brought against the police officers, not the man they harmed. This is our taxpayer here at Allentown Police Department. So I read the article and I noticed that the reporter did not put the names of the police officers or the district attorney in the article. And so I went to YouTube to the First Amendment auditors to find out if they had been recording these police officers. And pissed off taxpayer helped me out, agreed to let me mirror some of his videos and show you the culture that mainstream media tried to describe in an article. Because it's when we combine all the work of mainstream media and the First Amendment auditors or even citizen journalists on YouTube. That is when we get full transparency and accountability and we are starting to see changes in the way police officers behave and the way judges respond to that in courts, even if we had to go all the way to Pennsylvania to find it. John Perez was charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Police say he basically picked a fight with them, and now they're reviewing whether or not that use of force was justified. Video posted online doesn't show it, and you can't hear any words exchanged. But police say John Perez, quote, came out of nowhere and said something to the tune of, you guys feel good about yourselves talking like that. Perez has told 69 News he wanted to know what was going on after seeing police out his window early Saturday morning behind the 700 block of South Fillmore Street. He says he didn't like how police were talking and words they were using in front of children. Police say they were responding to a call about someone with a gun, but when they arrived to the South Allentown neighborhood, people, including the person who called, were uncooperative, and they described the situation as tense. But in their eyes, it was over until Perez showed up. In an affidavit, an officer says Perez mentioned something about officers' guns and, quote, took an aggressive step towards him. Officer Jose LeBron says he told Perez to, quote, get out of my face. He says that's when Perez raises his right arm and clenches his fist. Another officer knocks his arm down. The officer standing in front of Perez says he gave another warning, quote, I advised him once again to get out of my face. When Perez didn't, the officer admits, I pushed him away from me. I was actually shoved to the ground, 
really hard, and then after that, it was it was the punches and grabbing and kicks and knees all over my body. The officer says Perez charged at him after the punch, and then during a scuffle, tried to grab his leg and pull him to the ground. Other officers stepped in. Police say they are looking at other video, including body cams with audio recording. Pissed off taxpayer showed us what these police officers look like every single day. And it is with that kind of transparency that the public will be outraged and we will eventually get change. And that's what we saw when the judge in this case decided to hold the officers and the district attorney accountable. They, I've been they asked you not to record the uh, procedure. I can do that. I'm in the public lobby. I can call any from public. Not be waiting That's on unconstitutional. Your I'm not on my cell phone. It's okay. I'm recording. I understand that. I do. I understand that. We got Helm. Mr. Got Bradley, your, your choices are to stop recording, take care of your business, or leave as as instructed by the judge. Down. I get a warrant for my arrest and done. That's well. I'm going to take you into custody if you don't leave. Then you'll be uh, sued by the ACLU and everyone else. I understand that. Okay, you're under arrest. John Perez was charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Police say he basically picked a fight with them, and now they're reviewing whether or not that use of force was justified. Video posted online doesn't show it, and you can't hear any words exchanged. But police say John Perez, quote, came out of nowhere and said something to the tune of, you guys feel good about yourselves talking like that. Perez has told 69 News he wanted to know what was going on after seeing police out his window early Saturday morning behind the 700 block of South Fillmore Street. He says he didn't like how police were talking and words they were using in front of children. Police say they were responding to a call about someone with a gun, but when they arrived to the South Allentown neighborhood, people, including the person who called, were uncooperative, and they described the situation as tense. But in their eyes, it was over until Perez showed up. In an affidavit, an officer says Perez mentioned something about officers' guns and, quote, took an aggressive step towards him. Officer Jose LeBron says he told Perez to, quote, get out of my face. He says that's when Perez raises his right arm and clenches his fist. Another officer knocks his arm down. The officer standing in front of Perez says he gave another warning, quote, I advised him once again to get out of my face. When Perez didn't, the officer admits, I pushed him away from me. I was actually shoved to the ground really hard, and then after that, it was, it was the punches and grabbing and kicks and knees all over my body. The officer says Perez charged at him after the punch and then during a scuffle tried to grab his leg and pull him to the ground. Other officers stepped in. Police say they are looking at other video, including body cams with audio recording. Perez has said that he's glad that the video has gotten the attention that it has. Allentown police declined an on-camera interview, but on the phone, Chief Tony Osleben said that he, that Perez is entitled to his opinions and that he challenges Perez to, sh to show evidence or find evidence of corruption, saying that that video certainly doesn't show that. Reporting live in Allentown, Jamie Stover, 69 News. And corruption doesn't always appear in a video. Sometimes it takes investigative reporting and local reporting to expose individuals who are involved in it. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to look at the Los Gatos Police Department. We're also going to evaluate lawyers and judges in the community. And what we have found with the First Amendment community and with citizen journalists will astonish you because it has outraged and astonished me. And I've been doing this for a long time. And I've lived here for a long time, and this has happened right under my very nose. So we're going to start asking why it is public records are being withheld from us and what it is that local public officials, judges, and police officers don't want us to see. So I am doing a story on a victim right now. Okay. And I need some public records. They should be really simple to access them and inspect them. Because what we're about that I'm specifically looking for are very narrowly tailored are all your policies and procedures of letting children visit inmates in the jail. That's it. Okay. That's all I'm looking for. 
I'm looking for um, because there is a little friction between family court and the sheriff's department. And you guys, to put you at ease, you guys have done your job. But we're finding that that is getting overridden. It's impacting a huge rape case that I'm investigating. And this is not a San Martin rape case, this is another one. Perfect. And um, I, all I want is access to those records. I want to see the policy. I need to film it. And the victims asked me to help. So, um, from my understanding, for public records, uh, typically how we handle them is once we get the initial like CPR request, if you submitted a public records request, have you yet for this? I'm going to retrain you. Okay. So, California public records law under government code 6253, I think okay. it is, don't quote me, I can look it up to give you it specifically at subsection A, it says I have a right to inspect, access, inspect, and copy whatever records I want during normal business hours. The policy that you're describing requires me to wait 10 days, it to be reviewed. This is not anything private or confidential. This is what you train your officers who, when a child appears at the jail, saying that they're going to visit this person, an inmate, I want to know what the policies and procedures require your officers to do. That's it. So, under I can get you can look up the government code. The okay. government code says that I have a right to access those records. Sure. I personally don't know what records you're asking about or where they're located as of right now, right? So I, that's why I wanted that's to, all we need to, find to help out. you out right. is if you were to submit that request I don't officially want, I don't have to, time to have to it documented, that way I can route it to the appropriate people because I personally don't know. We have many, many records here. We yes. have many okay, policies, so let's, procedures. Let's back, so. up. let's back up a little bit because you're telling me everything right for a formal request that I make in writing. I'm not doing that. Okay. There is a section in the law that says I have a right to access the records at any time they're open wherever the records are and that's what I want to know right now is where are those records are they in your computer database system that someone can just pull it up for me and I can look at it I have a USB I can sure. download it, it, it sh it's not complicated it's Perfect. not hard you should whoever is trained to work in the jail should have these records it should be at the jail or whatever I don't know where the records are but I need to access them and I'm allowed to do it during normal business hours not required to wait the 10 days so I don't have time to submit a request in writing, wait the 10 days and go that route. And the law actually says I have a right to access and inspect them. And I, I'm pushing for that. And I will do my best to try to get those records to you, but I'm just explaining to you since that we filter those requests to the appropriate entities, whether it's records, whether it's the county and we just council's office, um, that county, way, it gets to get filtered through. Not involved in this right certain now. certain records are releasable, but certain uh, records are not. Right. So These at the end of the day, I want to make sure you get whatever you're looking for. But I need to route them through the appropriate channels because I personally don't know so if we keep which going records up, you're looking for. I'll keep going up the channel. Sure. If we have to go to your PIO or whoever's in charge of your records in the sheriff's department, I don't want to go to county council. Perfect. County council is involved in this problem, and I don't want to ask them permission, and I'm not waiting 10 days. I'm accessing the records. This is the sheriff's department, the main uh, office, right? So whoever is in charge of training and policies and procedures at the jail, that's what I'm looking for. Do you so have I, any, do you have what you were asking for in writing, something that I can take up so I can pass it along to I see where I can get it for you? It's because really I can't write narrow. everything down that, that you're just asking. It's really narrow. It's the policies and procedures for children visiting inmates in the jail. Okay. Well, let me write that down so we can kind of start somewhere, all right? And okay. I don't want this to be confrontational. No, I don't either. I just, person. I really need I it. I want to help you out, but I, I just need a starting point, right? Okay. So. It's really simple because there are all kinds of laws about that. Let this me jot this down really quick okay. so that way I have. Uh, and while our natural instinct may be to blame the police officers with the badge standing in front of us for violating their training, for being rude, for being disrespectful, or for violating our rights, those police officers are just a symptom of a much larger problem. And when you're investigating public corruption, you have to start at the most basic levels. You have to reach into your community with the people that you know. You have to fact check their stories, and you have to work together. And since we posted this video the other day, we have been overwhelmed with information what we call citizen journalists, who have been providing open source investigations. They've been using social media and they've been searching through records to match information to bring us a story that can criminally charge many of these individuals, from police officers to lawyers and judges. 
So stay tuned. Thanks for sticking with us and watch what we're going to do next. You're searching my phone. How am I searching your phone? Am you I going to your property? Your, you are holding no, my phone. You don't even phone. know what it's talking about. Yes, I don't even know you look up court okay. records. This, this is an absolute joke, this, guys. Is this how you press this. up against people? We, we don't need everybody else. Okay. Okay. Need we have done nothing wrong in here. Uh, I need your name, please, sir. You're a witness. My name is Joshua Seymour. Seymour, do you have a case in, the, in here? Yeah. 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 Can you spell it for me, please? Thank you for. Uh, by the way, you broke my finger. Look at look at my finger. I'm not going to talk to you any further. That's fine. Joshua Seymour, can you spell we'll it, talk, please? We'll talk to him yeah. Joshua, can you spell your last name? Okay. So I have her phone. Mm -hmm. We got a call from from no, uh, court out saying that he's taking the picture. He has Stop my phone. I want my phone. It's a journalistic phone. I'm doing it. research in here, and he has my phone. He is withholding my phone. Okay, I got that. Turn that off, sir, please. No, sir, I'm not sitting off. down. He has okay. my okay. phone. We sure get that. Turn that off. Take a picture. Okay. Sure, turn that off. He's being cooperative. What are you doing, man? You hey, I'm not recording phone. anything. I have every right We're to have my phone. Being cooperative. Is this how you guys are going to push up on everybody at the courthouse? And hey, bud, if you're going to be our sheriff and vote for it, this stuff needs to stop here in Santa Clara County. Stop pushing me around. Why are we getting harassed at court? Number. I'm fighting for my child. Huh? Okay, I don't need this crap. They tucked me, they broke your finger. Sir, How is this even possible for you people to do? I didn't and I'm doing the whole thing for the boss and have you guys fired. This is ridiculous. Okay. Members he's, he's of the public should not, not be treated, he's he's treated like this. This is ridiculous, though. Her finger's fucking broken, man. Is that appropriate? She's a mother fighting for her divorce and for her family. She doesn't need to be treated like that. She's recording. I told her numerous times, stop recording. Let's FI him, and if he wants to leave, he's free to leave. I'm not going anywhere. I said, if you want to leave. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I am a... could help me. I'm looking for where the Mormon churches are in this area. Can you tell me uh, there's Campbell mm -hmm. and there's one in San Jose. Mm -hmm. Are there any in Los Gatos? Yes. yes. Where is that in Los Gatos? Um, it's up on Rose. Rose? Yeah.